Hey, I wanted to talk to you all for a quick second about a question that's come up fairly uh, frequently um, in the past few weeks with a number of different students. And it's essentially the question of how to get good. How do, how do I get good at this thing? And in my estimation, the real key, see the thing is, is that everybody starts at the same place. Victor Wooten, Jaco Pistorius, me, you, all started at the same place. And that was a place of not knowing. We all start at ground zero. So what, what makes one person able to go here while somebody else may only get here? Um, a lot of that has to do with how you, how you process information. But the simple answer is the key to exponential growth is taking small steps. There's a tendency to kind of look at the distance from here to there and just get overwhelmed by the breadth and the scope, the magnitude of information out there in the world and to get overwhelmed by how much you don't know yet. The real secret is none of us knows everything. None of us will ever know anything. All we can do is learn as much as we can. And how do we do that? The best way to learn is incrementally take bite-sized chunks of information don't just look at this massive pile of things and just keep staring at it hoping that it'll make sense no you have to take it apart and look at this little thing and think okay I'm gonna spend some time with this until I understand it until I've internalized it a little bit and then once you have that it goes in your bag you grab the next little thing that's why in all, all of my practice routines, I, you know, I always like to start at the beginning. When I started working on jazz theory and jazz harmony, I had a pretty good understanding of how to play the bass and I could do a lot of things with it. But in order to really, really grow well and practice well, I needed to start at the beginning, make sure I had a solid foundation, make sure I could find the root of every chord before I worried about the thirds. And then once I could get the roots, then I worried about the thirds. And then I'd moved on to the fifths. And then I started playing root three, five, you know, just arpeggios as an example. But it's, it's focusing on just that one step. You know, it's like standing at the base of a mountain. And if you just keep standing and looking, going, man, it's so far up to the top of that mountain, you'll never get anywhere. Or if you keep stopping every 10 feet and going, man, why haven't I gone any further than this? I feel like I've been walking forever. No, when you really make, make those large strides is when you just kind of keep your head down and just keep taking step by step, not worrying about how far you've gone or how much more there is to go, how much more there is to know. <laughs> um, it's just head down, keep grinding, one piece of information at a time, one little nugget at a time, one brick at a time. And eventually, when you do kind of pull your head up and look around, you realize, oh man, I've actually come a lot further than I thought I had. One, one habit I've, I've seen in a number of my students is just a lack of patience and the tendency to maybe shed for half an hour or an hour and then just think, you know, I don't think I'm any better than I was when I started today. <laughs> and growth doesn't really happen like that. It kind of takes repetition because the key to internalization is repetition. You might have to play a thing uh, 50 times, 100 times. Don't worry about how many times you need to play that thing before you can play it confidently. Just focus on getting to where you can play it confidently because once you can, then you have that thing, and now you can move on to the next thing. If you keep stopping and thinking, I don't know what I'm doing here, you know, I've, I've only taken two steps and I feel like I've been walking forever, it's going to take that much longer and it's going to seem that much more arduous. And the fact is that you're not going to go as far as you would have otherwise if you just kind of locked and loaded and worked on one thing at a time. Um, an easy analogy for me to make is the building of this website. I had this idea 10 to 10 to 15 years ago. One of the reasons I never did it was because it was so intimidating. The scope of the thing, when I really started kind of mapping it out and realizing what it would take, I just got overwhelmed and I kept putting it off, kept putting it off. When COVID happened, I realized I'm unemployed. I got all the time in the world. I'm not really supposed to leave the house. So, ah. Let me just do it. 
And sure, you know, every, every, uh, I started this in March working on this site. And, you know, after that first week, I kind of pull my head up and go, oh man, I've only got like, you know, six, seven lessons recorded. I don't know. Hey, you know what? Just do another lesson tomorrow. Just map it out. Do one more tomorrow. And then that next day, map a couple out. Every once in a while, I get two in a day. I think there was a couple of times where I got three in a day. And, you know, and of course, as I'm doing it, I'm teaching myself how to edit video and making all kinds of mistakes and realizing I forgot to record my bass for that entire lesson. And, oh, man, I got to do the whole thing over again. But I just kept my nose down and I just kept get one more video tomorrow, get one more lesson, think of one more idea, one more one more little thing, and then start building this site. And they're like, okay, you know, when, honestly, I launched May 5th. And when I launched, compared to now, the site was not very good. But I just had to have faith in the process and trust that, okay, I'm not going to be afraid to start here. This is day one. It's not the, it's not where it's going to be on day 901. Just start here and make it a little better every day. Just every day you see a little problem, you fix it. You ask somebody for feedback and they, they hand you a, a, <laughs> a page full of problems in an email and you go, okay, whew, one problem at a time. You fix that problem. You move on to the next problem. You fix that problem. You think, okay, I'm going to do one more lesson. I just had an idea for another lesson. There's one more lesson. And that's how I approached it. And now I'm not saying it's the best site in the world and it's the best thing, but you know, in contrast to where I started, I'm very I'm pretty far along. Still in contrast to where I'd like it to be, I'm nowhere close. But I feel with I feel good about where I've traveled in that amount of time from March to May and then from launch to here, things are consistently getting better. There's more and more lessons. I'm feeling like, okay, this is fairly robust now. There's a lot going on. People are digging this site. Okay, this is cool. Now I feel like now I feel like we're at a good starting place. You know, it took me five, six months, however long to get to this point. But it's only five or six months. If I hadn't started, I would be no further along than I was in March. I wouldn't have done anything. Same thing with my practice routine when I was in college. I had so much to learn when I dropped out of college because I didn't understand what they were talking about. I felt like I have so much to learn. I don't know everything yet, not even close, but I am so much further along than I was back then because I refused to get defeated by that thought process. I refused to let it, you know, let it take control over me because I knew, I knew and thankfully, I was smart enough to realize that as as afraid as of I, as afraid as I am of how much more growth I need, I know that if I don't do anything, I'll be no closer to it tomorrow or a year from now. And I always I always project into the future, and I think, what will I have wish I had done tomorrow? And I try and use that as my as my guidance for today and i know you know in starting this site i knew that if i didn't if i didn't even at least try that at this point right now today i would be supremely disappointed in myself for at least not having tried you know giving it a shot um so not to not to beat that horse into the ground that analogy um but i that's that's kind of the approach you need to take to your growth with music don't be so overwhelmed by how much information there is and how many different styles of music there is and how big those music theory books are. <laughs> um, you don't need to know everything. You don't need to be able to play everything. You don't, you don't need to do anything. But try and be just a little better tomorrow than you were today. Try and learn one thing today. So tomorrow, you're one thing further along. Just try and do one thing every day. And I think you'll be pretty surprised and pretty pleased with how far you've come in not that long a time, relatively speaking. 
Now, I also suggest you check out some of the other videos I've done in the mindset section here, how to develop your voice, um, that you are not an amateur, because um, all of those mindsets, these all kind of work together, and they cover some different aspects, but it's all really looking at the same, the same ball um, from different angles in a way, in a manner of speaking. A couple of points I would like to, to impart and things to keep in mind. One, never be afraid to ask questions, no matter how dumb the question is. I have asked questions that made my teachers just spontaneously combust with laughter because they couldn't believe the question I was asking. Kind of all in good fun, I just uh, would catch them off guard with how kind of ridiculous the question is, but it was you know something that they had taken for granted, like, you know, when you're trading fours uh, with the band and the drummer's playing, do the changes keep moving or do I just like come back in where I was when I stopped playing? It's, you know, it's like if a tree falls in the forest and nobody's there to hear it, did it make a sound kind of thing. Um, but you don't know until you know. So never be afraid to ask questions. It's the only way to, to get the information. And if somebody ever makes you feel bad for asking a, d a dumb question, especially if they're an educator or a teacher of some kind, maybe find a, a new teacher. Um, I, I don't subscribe to that in any fashion. Ask questions. Another point, don't put all of your energy into chops. In my estimation, technique is kind of a byproduct of, of, of of practicing a lot, of playing a lot. The technique kind of takes care of itself. You want to make sure you're playing with good hand position and good, you know, actual technique as far as the musculature is, is, and your ergonomics are concerned. But don't worry too much about chops. No, no bass player has ever lost a gig because they couldn't slap Donna Lee. Um, no bass player has ever lost the gig because they couldn't solo over Cherokee at 300 BPM. Um, maybe the band leader will wish you could, you know, here and there, but for the most part, what is really required of you is musicality, musical empathy. They're really kind of the same thing. Um, the ability to actively listen. Active listening is a huge skill, which is why transcription is important. And uh, vocabulary bass playing vocabulary, understanding groove and understanding your role in the band and just being a solid anchor, being that bridge between the drummer and the rest of the band. And, you know, so for me, it's rhythm, harmony, groove, vocabulary. And the, the chops kind of take care of themselves as you work on that stuff. Of course, there were times in my life where I focused on playing fast and learning uh, Chick Corea heads to, you know, to develop that facility and that stuff is fun and I'm not saying don't do that stuff I'm just saying don't only do that stuff and that's basically it just be aware that we all exist on a spectrum no matter how good you are there's always somebody who's going to be better there's always somebody who's going to be less developed than you don't worry about where you are on that spectrum or how old you are in relation to how, where you are on that spectrum. None of that. Music is meant to be enjoyable. It's meant to be fun. It's meant to connect with people. So only, only focus on being the best you can be and trying to be a little bit better tomorrow. And remember to just try and learn, you know, one little thing every day bite-sized chunks of information. Focus on that, and I, th I think you'll be uh, pretty happy with the results before too long.